Hey everybody, sorry for the late start and sorry for uh, my air purifier going nuts in the background. I don't know what it sensed, but it's, yeah, it's set to auto, so it's just gonna do its thing. Uh, yeah, I've been busy the last few days. I have some big plans for the stream that'll come up maybe starting tomorrow? Tomorrow or maybe Monday. Mm. My neck just cracked a little bit. That <laughs> was unexpected. Uh, yeah, some big plans. Uh, basically, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to start streaming every morning or so. And I'm just going to stream doing my auditions. Since I'm, I, I'm a voice actor and I audition more or less every day. So I'll just, you know, I'll sit at the table over here next to me and uh, I have a webcam set up and everything and run through my warm-ups and then I'll just take you guys through the process of combing through auditions and casting calls figuring out which ones I actually want to try out and then actually recording and editing and submitting them so I hope y'all are excited for that uh, it's not the only content I'm gonna do Obviously, but I just figured, you know, it's something I do every day already. They're public casting calls, so it's not like an NDA thing. And if it is like, you know, work that uh, like I'm doing for a client privately, obviously I'm not going to do that on stream. And if there's an NDA, of course, I'm not even going to talk about any NDA work because that's, you don't. Um, but yeah, I'll take you guys through that and you can see what's up. And then after I do that, I'll transition into you know some kind of game either this or maybe something on tabletop i don't know but we'll we'll see how it goes so i'm gonna start doing that uh i think i'll probably take a uh a break for the weekend yeah to prepare for that because i got a lot of stuff to do um i'm gonna rearrange my bookshelf of board games because now it's gonna be a backdrop i mean you guys are gonna see the whole room because it's it's a wide angle camera that i have but uh, in the meantime, let's crack back into Donkey Kong Adventure. Looks like... Oh, we're actually only, we're only like a third of the way through. 40%. So this might be a couple streams. Okay. But uh, yeah. So big plans. Big plans for the stream. I just, I want to stream more often. And I just realize it's like... I can do game content, but it's also like I'm already doing auditions and stuff, so may as well just show it off. Uh, finding all the missing puzzle pieces should solve the puzzle, in fact. So, yeah. I, I hope that's uh, some content y'all are interested in. And let's just keep going with the game for now. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a long week so far. Um, and I still have, like, a lot of work that I gotta do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm just, I'm looking at my to-do list like, ugh. So much plans. So much plans. Okay. Um. Whoa, 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 whoa. Grabbing all the bananas. I think... Nah, the music seems like it's at a good level. Yeah, the annoying thing was just setting it up so that you guys would be able to hear my recordings um, as I'm doing them, which on PC, it's super easy. On PC, you literally just tell it like, hey, I want to, to have this output uh, go to OBS. But on Mac, you have to get like some kind of software, mixer, or I have hardware that would technically work, but it'd be noisy, so I didn't want to do that. Um, another closed gate, but hey, look at this ornate coral organ. It makes you want to tickle the old ivories. They're not ivories, it's all sorts of colors. In fact, it's coral, like you just said. By pushing this button, the piano will play automatically. Cool, but what would be the use of that? Hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
Oh, is it just Simon? Yeah, sure. Well, that's it, just three? That's easy. Yellow. Yeah, just three rounds of Simon, huh? The gate is open, plus a secret banana button appeared. Come on, shed some more licks on those ivories. That'll open that, eh? What did I do wrong? we go. Dip.
Ba-bam. Okay. Sorry, I'm kind of hoarse. It's been a long week. And my acid reflux has really been, uh, getting out of control. Gotta do something about that. I need to get a uh, need to get up top to switch the yellow blocks. Dip. Uh, where do I go from here?
Okay, it got one block. Here we go. Okay, I got it. Now we push this guy. And whoop. Uh, okay. Kind of underwhelming for how much work that was, but whatever. And a battle. Who's that? This guy, yeah? He's a shark man. There's a different shark man. The other one was, what, Hammerhead? And this guy's uh, a sleeker fellow. Sorry, I got text. Okay, okay, sorry. Uh, Finn, one shark feeding frenzy. Okay, what's his deal? Got a big ol' hammer. Let's go to the battle HQ first. Yeah, let's go with that. Those are all fine. And skill tree. We got one to spend, so let's go with... Options, so let's save up for Donkey Kong. Yeah, same with you. Man! Uh, yeah, nothing much to do in the skill tree. So let's uh, attack to Cam. Got a hopper. Got a Ziggy and got a buckler. Couple bucklers. Then he's immune to reaction shots. Great. He's got villain sight. He's got an ink weapon. Oh boy. Okay. Um. So let's hop over here. And, yeah, protect ourselves a little bit. Toss her over there. And, uh, do this. Nice. Turn on Harry Eye. 
Zip through him. And... Yeah, get a little more advantageous here. But... As much as that seems the way to go, let's actually... Get him there, I think. Nope. Oh, he's like a smasher. Okay. I wish I'd realized that earlier, but that's fine. We can work with this. Okay. Oh lord, he's coming. Wow, he went so far. That's not great for me. I mean, it doesn't do that much damage, though. Oof. Alright, where you going? Pick up all these bananas. Then, um, I think I'll do this. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, sweep in there. Go up to give her some support. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Ah, yeah, okay. Walked right into that. Bug in here. Can't grab him because he's a mid boss. That's fine. We'll do this. Save Magnet Dance for later. And we'll deal with this guy. He seems like more of a nuisance.
killed his own guy like a fool. Alright, um... Let's grab that. Get over here. Bounce him. I meant to do a magnet dance. That's fine. Still in range? Okay. Oh, jeez. Ah. He's out. Well, dip. Uh, we're gonna have to do this. Eh, even the octopus dances. That's cute. She's dead too now. I might have really guffed this up by not playing it smart. Yup.
All right, let's try that again. Right. Um hmm, yeah. Let's grab him. Hop over here. And hop right there. And bam. do something else, but looks like that's about all we get. That's fine. Mm, buy him. And yeah, toss on the shield. See how this goes. After Cranky. I guess Cranky's the only one in range. his range. Oh, well, basically the whole field, huh? His fill in sight is just like two blocks around him though, so that's not too bad. Okay. He's gonna get hit, but that's fine. We're gonna get this guy. Yeah, we're 
we're gonna grab him and do that again. Oh, no! I accidentally hit my own girl. That's all right. <laughs> Wasted. Me. He's gonna probably hit Cranky again, so goodbye, Cranks. Nope, he's going after well, both of them. Oh boy, this is getting a little. Loose. <laughs> Grab him. Hop over here. Come back. Hit him. Get him. And yeah, just blast him. That should be fine. Because I think we can take him out in this next turn. Okay, um, yeah, let's boost over here. And then we'll zip through them. Nice. to get no okay
Hey, oh. You stupid, Cranky. Cranky, you stupid. Yeah, there we go. Yeesh. On our way. Oh, another battle right away, eh? Oh, he's got melons. It's raining ink-filled coconuts. Ouch, why couldn't they be blueberries? Uh, I thought they was... I thought they was melons. Summoner, incorrigible invokers. If my readings are correct, those are summoners. Guess what, they have summoning skills. We must defeat all the summoners, otherwise we'll fight an endless battle in the coconut rain. Okay. Let's see what we got. Oh, parrot. Well, of course, we're gonna do the one that's good against summoners. What do you think I am, a fool? And of course, they're all just slightly too expensive. Oh, I don't like what happens to the bird's neck there. Ooh, bit gruesome. Who's this? Oh, he's a frog. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I think that'll do it. Then let's tack to cam. Got a guy up top. Right over there. Okay. Whoa, they're so spread out, man. Ugh. Okay. Let's fight. So we're gonna grab you. Or no, we're gonna grab you. Hop up top. Yeah. Then throw you over there. Yep. And magnet dance him over. Do extra damage. And there we go. And he's done. Let's grab those bananas. Or we forget. I guess there, I mean, there's not much else I can do. And, yep. Oh man, I didn't even really get... get anything with that. Uh, oh yeah, Cranky still has a whole turn. Whoops, I'm gonna get inked. Totally forgot. Ah, 
Totally forgot to watch out for the ink. That's fine. Oof. All right, let's fast forward. Um, let's hop back. No, let's not. Let's just scoot back a little bit. Hey, let's go over there. And let's get our girl over here. Oh, I was hoping she'd team jump. That's fine. Oh, let's not miss out on this. There we go. Ah, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Mm, has some in my throat. Nice. And then, yeah, we'll turn that on. And we'll put him to sleep. Here comes the summon. Okay, you just bring in a whole other guy. That's pretty brutal. Thankfully, he was the only one awake, so it's actually not too big a problem for us. it coming down from here okay that sucks what happened to being a movement guy smh Uh, hey, Pinksel. Thanks for tuning in. Um, Rabbids is pretty good. I'm into the Donkey Kong DLC now, which I've been enjoying a lot. Like, I'm glad that they actually changed it up a decent amount, added in a lot of new mechanics. It's not just the aesthetics of changing it to, like, bananas and all that. But I'm most excited for when I start Sparks of Hope, the sequel. Which I'll do after I finish this. I'm gonna 100% the DLC since it seems to be pretty short. So it'll take me a couple streams. Um, yeah, Sparks of Hope looks like it's gonna be really interesting. Yeah, good old Donkey Kong. I thought with uh, Rabbit Kong being the first boss that uh, that just meant that Donkey Kong got combined with the rabbit, but I guess not. I mean, I guess, you know, Donkey Kong didn't get combined, or, like, Peach didn't get combined for Peach Rabbit or anything, so I guess that makes sense. Uh, 
speaking of Donkey Kong, they finally showed a trailer of Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong for the movie. It looks pretty good. I like the redesign they did for Donkey Kong. You know, he's a little more fluffy. It's pretty neat. And I think Seth Rogen, I mean, we didn't really get to hear him talk too much, so hard to say how he's going to do in the part. Oh, you haven't seen it yet? Yeah, they did like a tiny, like, five-minute direct that's mostly the trailer. But that's up on YouTube. And, yeah, they had uh, they had Seth Rogen say a little piece. And they showed off Donkey Kong. I'm a little distracted. I'm trying to suss out what the best strategy is here. I think this will do it. Oh, not quite. We're getting close, though. Ah, there we go. Yeah, he was in a bad position. Okay, so how do I... I think I gotta... Yep, like that. Then we'll just blast him. Yeah, I'm... I'm cautiously optimistic about the movie. You know, uh... They also... Peach. I should have said Peach is also introduced in this second trailer. And she looks great. You know, they redesigned her as well. And it's just... It's like small things, but her face is like a little more round and it's it's very pleasant. So I'm, yeah, I'm very excited. Well, okay, I'm not very excited. I still think Chris Pratt is not a great choice for Mario. Um, but everybody else seems like they're doing their best and it seems like everybody's excited to work on the project at the very least. Now I hate Chris Pratt. He's a complete douchebag. So, you know, it's, it's between that and between him not even trying at all, at all with Mario. Like, he he didn't do any kind, like, the most he did is, like, a slight accent. But it's like, come on, man, there's so many actors who would have blown it out of the park. Like, even if you're not doing Charles Marnay, which I still don't understand why not, like, you gotta... You gotta find somebody who's gonna try, you know? At least everybody else is trying. And Peach's voice is like, eh, she's fine. It's Anya Taylor-Joy. She's a fine actress. The voice she's doing is, like, pretty generic. Could have been pretty much anybody to do that. But I'm sure she'll do a good job. Uh, blah, blah, blah. okay. Uh, run, you curs. Run! Tell all the other curs that Beepo's coming. <laughs> Where'd you learn this language, Beepo? Who taught you this? Coconut shunt. Ooh. Right on the edge of not getting a perfect. That's fine, that's fine. Yeah, and that's the thing is, Charles Marnay is gonna be in the movie. I'm sure it's just gonna be like a small cameo, but they did announce that he's gonna be in it in some capacity. So I just don't know why why they couldn't just let him do it, you know? And I know some people are like, it'd be a little too much. It's like, yeah, a whole Mario movie might be a little too much, you know, if that's what we're going with. I think he would have been great for it because he's been great for it for 20 plus years. Come on. Yeah. Nope. That's not what we want. Oh, wait, actually. Yes, it is. Puzzle piece. Uh, do, 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 do. Lift that up. Keep the puzzle going. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. And it's like illumination... It looks to be one of their better movies, because, like, um, they've definitely become the, like, DreamWorks of this generation, where they're not quite as good as Disney, and they're certainly, um, aiming at, like, the lowest common denominator of humor and 
like, kid appeal. But they're fine. They're fine. I didn't hate, uh, what was it? Uh, Despicable Me was okay. I haven't really seen the sequels of that. Sing? I actually, I'm not like a huge fan of it, but I don't hate it. It is definitely that like pop music, like that, that uber, uh, uber poppy, like masked singer, American Idol kind of pop culture. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not big on that, but her performances are fine, animation's good. I like Taryn Egerton, so I'm glad he's in it. Um, yeah, we're gonna go with the one. It gives us the honey. Uh, okay. Okay. And tack the cam real quick. Tropical buckler. Collector. So we gotta go after these collectors. ASAP. Okay. Let's go for it. Now we're gonna go to higher ground, of course. Actually, no, will we? Maybe, yeah, let's hop around over here. And we're gonna... Whack that guy. Um, that's weird. That what? Let's do this way. Nice. Got the bounce. Where are you going? Where are you going? Come back. Yeah, yeah, the collectors are annoying. Just run all willy-nilly. They got a huge range, so they can just go wherever they feel like. Frustrating. That's all I gotta say about it. Frustrating. And then we can get them both. Hmm. Yeah, let's take him out. And put him to sleep. Let him run away. Turn on Harry Eye. Can it, do I get a third? Do get a third, nice. Yeah, I always love a character that can swoosh a lot. There we go. Ooh, double golden shot, nice. And there's the shield. Aw, oh, man, how many pieces can they hold? Is it just infinite? Because usually they don't get more than two. At a time. It looks like they can just grab as many as they feel like. Huh. Whoa! Nice. Alright, we got a lot of bananas to pick up real quick. Which I am fine with. That means more money for me. Uh, we gotta go after him. So let's... Yeah, let's zip over here as fast as we can. Uh, 
Yeah, I have a lot of opinions in general about um, celebrity uh, voice, like having celebrities as voice actors. It's really just stunt casting. Let's be honest. Like it's a combination of they think people will see their movie if they have big celebrities, which I don't, I don't agree with that. I think that is very much incorrect and people will always appreciate a good performance first and foremost but also um it's just like an ex uh, a excuse so that they get like the executive or whatever can meet that celebrity like that's it Like, we get it. Now you get to hang out with Chris Pratt. But it's not... That's not what this is about, man. But, like, at the same time, some celebrities, you know, like... Um... Like... Uh... Jack Black. Jack Black is actually trying. Seth Rogen seems like he'll try. Keegan-Michael Key, definitely putting in a ton of effort. So, like, while I'd always prefer an actual, like, voice actor, it's not always the worst thing to have a celebrity because they're not all, like, lazy about it. A big name can't always save a bad movie. I would say a big name rarely would ever save a bad movie. If a movie is bad, it doesn't really matter how good the performances are within it, you know? There's there's very few movies where you can say, like, that was... That would have been terrible if it weren't for, like, this guy specifically. Like, no, you might get a thing where it's like, this movie was not great, but then this pushed it over the edge. But it's rare that a movie will become good because of a, a good performance or even, like, a large name. Um, actually, let's grab that. Grab Cranky. Yeah, we're gonna toss him down. And then he'll grab the last piece. Well, pieces. Come on. Let me. Yep. Don't gotta worry about those guys, because we're just gonna grab, grab, and grab. There we go. Okay, um, yeah, let's continue then. Uh, any other bananas to pick up? Nope. I'm curious, because the way that this, this DLC is structured is a little funky in comparison to the, um, the main game. So it feels like it's not that long, but maybe it's longer than I realize. Oh, excuse me. I don't know, I think I can finish it in this stream and then I'll do another stream to go through and do all the 100% stuff. I'm probably gonna, uh, as I said at the top, I'm probably gonna take the weekend off before implementing my new, my new stream schedule. Which that again, for anyone just tuning in, is uh, I'm going to start streaming every day in the mornings. EST, I mean, pretty much after, you know, I've had breakfast, exercised, showered, all that. 
uh, and I'll start off with vocal warm-ups and then um, which y'all can join me for and then uh, auditioning auditioning for a bunch of stuff so I'll you know explain my auditioning process like the vetting process for what what I'm actually gonna audition for record and edit and all of that on stream and then after I'm done with that we'll get into a game and yeah we'll uh we'll see how that goes I'll just start doing it daily because my schedule is pretty flexible and I can pretty much do that without much difficulty I'm yeah I'm fortunate enough to be in a position where I can do something like that I don't have a day job necessarily uh voice acting is is the only real day job that I have at the moment so makes it a lot easier to move to things like streaming and especially because I um yeah voice acting in terms of like actual money it's been a little slow so I figured I'd just uh boy I went the long way on this uh, I figured this is a, a good way to, you know, get myself out there, still audition for stuff, still do work, but, um, still get to perform, which is always the goal. Yeah, I hope it's going to be cool. I hope people like it. I just figured it's like I'm already going to spend so much of my day auditioning for stuff. I may as well, you know, show y'all. It's not, like, going to be that hardware intensive or anything. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem. And I think enough people would be interested in it that it's it's worth the hassle. Because, yeah, setting up... Uh, setting everything up to be able to do that was a bit of a hassle, but I'm pretty sure I have it set correct. I have like a webcam at the table for the uh, warm-up part, and then um yeah, I'm pretty sure I got all the audio stuff worked out, so you'll be able to hear the auditions as I record and edit them. It should be pretty fun. At least, you know, I hope so. I'm not expecting huge numbers or anything. Um, yeah, I've, j I've seen so many streamers who are like, I'm going to go full-time now. And then as soon as they go full-time, because they're... Uh, because they're so focused on numbers now, it like completely kills the vibe that people came to their channel f two in the, b in the first place. They get so stressed out because now they're not making the money that they need and now streaming is no longer a thing that they were just doing because they enjoyed it. They're doing it because they have to. It just, uh, it completely, completely, uh, robs them of the ability to just stream for the sake of streaming. And I just think it's, yeah, it's ill-advised and frankly... You know, I don't, I don't think anyone should jump to streaming, uh, full time until they, until they, like, on their worst weeks. That's the thing, is, like, as a freelancer, your numbers are always going to fluctuate. Like, I have some months where I make practically nothing. Like, barely enough to live off of, and I have to, you know, live off of credit cards for a little bit. And then I have other months where I do incredible, and if I'm like, oh, now I'm in the money. But neither lasts. So you just have to hope that it all averages out. And so, similarly, with streaming, you basically have to be like, okay, could I... L I'm gonna see how much I can make. And until the lowest amount I can make in a month... Um, is something I could live off of. I shouldn't do it. Or, like, savings, right? Like, you gotta make sure that you have enough savings stockpiled up so that when you hit those weak months, 
it's not a huge deal. Because, like, in general, it's like... If there's ever going to be a point where you're stressing out over the numbers, it's just going to be a vicious cycle. It's going to be, you're going to stress out about the numbers, and that's going to show when you're streaming, and then people won't want to watch your streams as much because you, you know, you're not as fun to watch anymore because you're stressed out, and that'll stress you out more, and it'll just, yeah, just vicious cycle. Just keep creating a feedback loop. And, like, in general, like, full-time streaming is going to be super volatile because, like, no matter how good it's going at any time, who knows? Maybe Twitch will get shut down. Or, like, you know, maybe similar to YouTube. There were people making great livings on YouTube for a long time. And then the adpocalypse happened. And it, like, they all got hosed. So... You just got to be ready for stuff like that. You can never put your trust in any one platform. So with, like, with streaming, I don't put my full trust in Twitch. It'd be cool to make a, a, some amount of money. I was able to get, like, my first... I was able to get my first uh, withdrawal, but that's because the rules changed, and instead of it being $100, they dropped it to $50 that you can do it at. So I already had, I don't know, like 60 bucks or something. And that's 60 bucks over, like, over two years of streaming. So it's not, it's not anything to write home about. But, um, yeah, it's like I have other income streams. And I'm fortunate enough that I have very low expenses, low overhead. So I'm able to stream a lot, but I don't, I don't make any, uh, I don't make any assumptions that anybody else is in the position I'm in because I'm in a pretty unique position where I'm able to do a lot of stuff that other people have to uh, really go out of the way and spend a lot of extra energy on. And I don't, uh, I don't take that for granted, you know? I appreciate that I'm at where I'm at. And I feel pretty... I think I gotta push this over this way. And I feel pretty content. Even though I, I'll get busy and stressed and everything still, it's like, well... Son of a... Mm, push it the wrong direction. Hold on, hold on. Um, It's like, it's still better than when I was working in, like, warehouses or working security... Food service. Hated working food service jobs. Would not recommend them to anybody. But yeah, just... If, if you ever want to make the leap to be a freelancer and... You know... Streaming is freelancing. There's no guarantees. You're not an employee of anywhere. Not really. Then just be ready because it... Like, just be ready for... Tons of uncertainty. Um, and fluctuating income. And all sorts of stuff. Like that. Because it'll happen. But, you know, if you're going to be a freelancer, do it because... It's something you like to do because there's so many jobs you could get that have a lot of security, have a lot of consistency that you'd probably be a lot happier doing. So, yeah, the only, really the only reason you should freelance is because you're enjoying it. What am I doing here? Am I... Am I a fool? I think I got a... Blue! There we go. Um... I... Think... I 
have it? Yeah, so now I just gotta close the blue off. Make sure I'm hitting it from the right side. Oh, and then I gotta get the... Mm, gotta get the yellow. Well, that's okay. I'm pretty sure... Pretty sure the uh, white one stays. Wait. Wait. Yes. Okay, there's the yellow. And I have to... Do the green. Which I'll do this way. Close her off. And there we go. Um, what else have I done lately? I was mostly working on that stuff, getting set up for Christmas, you know, gonna go visit my mom, which I haven't done in a couple years, because she just, she lives in the middle of nowhere, so if I visit, like, there's nothing to do. So, while it's great to see her, it's also, like, travel is so stressful. Uh, um... Like, yeah, I usually end up going to see my dad because more of my family lives near my dad. So when I go there, it means that I can, you know, see a lot more of my family. But, like, my little brother is going off to college soon, so I want to see him before then. And it's just, it's been a bit, so. Um. Oh, yeah, I uh, checked out Vivzy Pops new stuff. I I've been off and on, you know, following Vivzy Pops stuff for a while. Uh and Vivzy did that I just went in a circle. Uh Has been Hotel. Did the Has been Hotel pilot. And I put it off for a long time because I saw the promotional material and I just, I don't know, a 30 minute YouTube video seems like such a commitment that I was like, do I want, do I want to do this? And I finally watched it. I don't know. I think my expectations were too high because, uh... I've been hearing, like, such great stuff. Everybody's saying it's amazing, super great animation, and so funny, and this and that. And it's like, watching it, I was like, it's fine. You know? It's, I don't know, I, I expected it to be really great, and it's like, it's good. It's, it's, you know, they put a lot of time and effort into it. There's, like, a lot of little things I could say combing through, like, with the voice... Uh, the voiceovers, which I think is it comes down to direction, some things about the animation, um, which I think are just parts of Vivzy's style that kind of, I don't know, they just don't, don't quite work for me. Um, but then I was like, I was like, this is, this is fine, but it's kind of underwhelming because my expectations were too high. So let's check out Hell of a Boss, which is the other pilot, the one that actually, like, kept going, um, I will say, hello, uh, has been Hotel, the Radio Demon. That Radio Demon, I like a lot. I, I like the concept of him a lot, and I, I appreciate how he worked. Um, oh boy, another one of these, huh? Uh, but then Hell of a Boss, 
I watched that because, like, I've been taking private coaching from uh, Richard Horvitz, who's in that, and he's doing voice direction in that. Uh, oh, one second. Uh, more smugglers. They're bringing bad bananas to their home base. Obviously, Rabbit Kong is getting nervous. He's gathering as many bad bananas to him as he can. Okay, let's hit the Battle HQ. So, I was like, that'd be something to talk about with him, and I'm curious what his... Uh, voice direction is like because I haven't seen that. Um, let's increase that. Increase that. Another dash. And increase that. And increase that. Okay. Um, and hell of a boss is way better. Like, Has Been Hotel, I was like, this is okay. Hell of a Boss is really funny. Like, it, it's so much more funny. The fact that it's shorter, I think, helps, because it, it you know, forces them to make uh, snappier decisions in terms of uh, the humor. The voice cast is great. Voice direction's great. Like, it's all... Uh, something I really appreciate is that the the designs are more cohesive. Because Vivzy Pop, you know, one of my pet peeves about her work is just that the designs will have a similar style, but they'll be so vastly different. Like, all the characters will look totally unique. And so, I'm sure some people might like that, but for me, it's like, it's just so chaotic to the eye to see so many clashing designs. But with a uh, Hell of a Boss, it's like every character looks unique, but every character... Um... Like, the, it's cohesive. They all look like they belong together. The one that sticks out is Luna. Uh, the werewolf. Uh, werewolf lady. And, yeah, I don't know. I think she's fine. I certainly, um... I, I, I can see the from just the internet's react and reaction that she is like the fave. Everybody really seems to like her, and she's okay. I think my favorite is Moxie. You know, probably because uh, of my bias towards Richard Horvitz to begin with. But yeah, I'm gonna keep watching the series. I do really like it. You know, it's. And there's some questionable choices in terms of language that they use, like the fact that they uh, use the R slur first, like in the pilot, and I'm like, that's, I don't know about that. <laughs> like in 2019, we knew that that was not appropriate. And yeah, there's the whole thing of like, well, that's, you know, it's in character for, like that character would say that and I'm like eh, I guess I don't know I still don't still uh still don't like hearing it very much but I don't know it's been a few years maybe they've changed their tune on that or whatever um but all in all like I'll I'll keep watching it it's really funny and again I don't know there's a lot to be said of like yeah, I'm I'm treading into dangerous ground with this statement, and I I'll fully admit that I'm probably I, I'm probably not the person to really talk about this since it doesn't really affect me as much. Um, but there's something to be said about how. Offensive language is used in art. And I'm not I'm not excusing it for certain. I'm I'm I don't think that it's like you know, the whole like, oh, free speech and comedy. Like, I don't think that that's it's too general, too vague. It's kind of reductive to just be like, it's you should be able to say anything. It's like, no. You can say anything, technically. And you're going to see the repercussions for saying whatever it is you say. Um, whatever those repercussions may be. 
Uh, um, I'm picking my words very carefully. <laughs> but I don't think that... I don't know. I, th I think if you use certain language, especially certain offensive language, in your comedy, in your art, then... It, there's a lot of responsibility that um, that you take on doing that. It's it's very important that if you do that, you're doing it for a very specific reason that you're not just that, that you recognize um, that it is a big decision. Like it, you're not just throwing out epithets willy-nilly like it's no big deal because it's it's a pretty big deal like I, I think that if you understand the responsibility of what you're doing you have a good reason and you're saying something important then using offensive language or offensive humor Regardless of, you know, necessarily, you know, who it offends is also, like, I mean, it's a case-by-case -case basis, obviously. Because there's, there's many instances where it can be done well, uh, while, you know, not necessarily being treated very responsibly. And there's many cases where it can be done poorly, whilst trying your best to be responsible about it, so... There's a lot. It's a it's an open discussion. It's a lot that's happening, but overall, just take it seriously, you know. And I know the concept of taking a joke seriously for some people is an oxymoron, but it's 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 true. If you care about comedy, if you care about the comedy that you're making, you should want to take it serious and to you know, treat it with the gravity that that entails. Um, all of that to be said, personally, I don't think they did that with that instance in the Hell of a Boss pilot. I I get the joke. I get that what they're saying is, you know, he's he's being shocking. He's intentionally being provocative towards the other characters. He he is antagonistic. Like that's the that's what the character is all about. But it's not yeah, that's not an excuse. Like you still Like you you don't get a pass to say like use slurs because well the character would say the slur, it's like yeah, but you created the character and I'm not saying that like you know that means that you have total control over what they do necessarily what what uh some about like that they're it's less like a marionette and more like you're just connected to them by stale rubber bands or something I don't remember um I don't even remember where that that quote comes from but like you created the character, so you need to take the responsibility for creating a character who would use that kind of language. You know, you can't just write it off as like, it's just a joke, it's just the... Because nothing is just a joke. Even... Even... No matter how flippant a joke is, no matter how little thought is put into a joke, there's always an implication. There's always, at the very least, an implication of this person is laughable. It's okay to laugh at this person. So, just you just need to recognize that that's what you're saying with that kind of humor. And if that's if that's the statement you want to make, if you've thought it out and taken the time, then you know, I can't really criticize that if that uh I I can still criticize the work, but I can, um, 
I can't criticize the level of care you put into it. So... Yeah, it, it's just like... When you make humor like that, you're just saying, like, this... This group of people, or this person in specific, is laughable, is worthy of ridicule, and... If that person ends up being just a person with a mental disability. Come on, man. That's not cool. Like, didn't your parents raise you to have some empathy towards people who are unfortunate? Like, they're less fortunate than you are. You can't deny that, and... To... Yeah, to... Just make... Make fun of them to ridicule them. And use language that ridicules them. That's not cool, man. But again, it's one instance, right? A lot of the... That was the thing I heard coming into... Has Been Hotel is like, Oh, it's so much... These characters are so offensive, and this and that, and it's like... Eh. Like, yeah, there's a lot of offensive implications underpinning a lot of them, but... It really wasn't that offensive. It... Like, ironically... In them trying to be super offensive with their humor, it became less offensive because it felt less like... I don't know. It, it It's hard to be offended at someone who's trying so hard to offend you. So it's... Yeah, it's just ironic that... Um, the one that I heard was real bad was not that bad, and the one that I heard was toned down... I actually had more problem with, so I don't know. It's a it's interesting to look at. Uh, but again, it's like I don't think like don't th think this is me saying that anyone involved with either project is like a bad person. At worst, they made an irresponsible decision. And, you know, that that's, it is what it is, you know. It's certainly, like, going further back than that, like, a lot of stuff. Um, a lot of comedy. Even going back, like, just a half decade, like, going back to 2016 or so. Like, it was still super offensive. So, in comparison to that, not that bad. And also, yeah, you can tell that Has Been Hotel was written much earlier than it was actually finished. Because the, just the comedy styling, it feels... I mean, it wasn't that long ago now, but, like, yeah, it feels so much more dated because it took them so long to animate it. But I'd say my only gripe is that I did see... Um, the creator of Viv's, uh, yeah, Vivzy Pop. Trying to excuse it by saying, like, well, we like villains, and it's like, I like villains too, but, you know, you need to, again, it's, it's just the responsibility of, like, recognizing what is acceptable, what, who is the butt of the joke here, who, like, are they antagonizing the characters, or are they antagonizing people who aren't even involved. Cause that's, yeah. It's, again, it's a lot to be said. It's important when creating any art to be responsible, and even a lot of art that I enjoy and, like, consume a lot of is... Um... Like, pretty problematic. Like, again, like, if you enjoy anything made... Like, 2015 or earlier, it's definitely going to be pretty problematic. Like, there's a lot of stuff from when I was growing up in the 90s, and even, like, the 2000s, that was just real offensive. Like, it would just be, like, Russell Peters? Russell Peters was a comic whose entire thing was just making racist jokes. Like, him... Carlos Mencia, like, so much of comedy when I was growing up was just racist, homophobic, 
just all over the place. And we ate it up. Everybody did. People thought it was hilarious. And, like, it's... It's a little frustrating that people want to ignore that and pretend like they were somehow above it and that they somehow... They somehow knew... Even back then. It's like, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Like, you can pretend like you did. But... You were there laughing along with the rest of us. And, like, there's no... Like... There's not really shame in that because that was just what the culture was at the time. But, you know, trying to ignore it and pretend like you were just never a party to it is... Again, it's like, it's reductive. It's like trying to pretend like, you know, some people were... were sinful... Uh, like, sinfully enjoying it. And it's like, well, I enjoyed it, but I understand. But no. I'm I'm not saying I'm any better than anyone else who enjoyed that stuff or still can continues to enjoy it. I think I think that, you know, I, th I think there's also like a big level of classism to it. Right? Because so much of media that ends up being kind of offensive ends up being media um made by and consumed by the lower class which I am definitely a part of. I grew up in a... Yeah, I grew up very poor, and I consumed a lot of media meant for the lower class. And... um, I loved it. I loved it, and a lot of it was very offensive. And I'm not gonna... I'll own that. Like, I definitely enjoyed a lot of offensive media on its own terms because it was offensive or like not in spite of the offense like I don't know it, it's it's similar to the whole like I like everything except rap and country you know it's like what what does that mean what like who makes rap music and country music the lower classes and it's interesting that some of the the uh, worst examples of rap and country are when they stopped being for the lower classes, when they started being like stadium country or um, like more bougie rap because it stopped being about the class struggle. And so uh, I, I guess my larger point is just just focus on on developing your overstanding, you know, because there's a lot out there. No person is an island. We're all products of our our culture and our society. We all are just like um, are just as guilty of the sins of our society, whether we participate in them willingly or not. So, just just try and learn. That's really all you can do is just try and learn. Be better. That's all I'm doing. I'm just, I don't know, I'm rambling. That's kind of what happens when you, uh, when you do a live stream like this. Just kind of go off for a while uh, well may as well take him out in essence I think the people involved in you know all of Vivzy Pop's work should be proud of all the effort that was put in. And... Um... And yeah, while I... I am gonna definitely... Look at, uh... I'm, I'm definitely gonna give a sidelong glance to some of the... The humor and the way that they decide to portray it. I don't think that that's... 
I don't think that that's something being problematic is ever a reason to discount it outright, you know? Um, I mean, some works are certainly beyond reproach. Like, in retrospect, the entire Harry Potter series is, like, so messed up. Like, it just seems like a fun, whimsical stuff, but, like, all of the creepy little neoliberal things that that J.K. Rowling was, like, slipping in there. Like, it's, it's shocking how propagandistic that entire series was. Um... without any of us realizing because most of us were kids reading it. And even like adults reading it didn't recognize that. And like, again, I don't grieve anybody for loving Harry Potter. I know for a fact that a lot of people found a lot of solace in pretty rough places with Harry Potter. I don't know, I, uh, I wanna make a video analyzing um, a series that I think kind of got, um, it, it didn't pop off all that big, but uh, it's a series uh, by Alan Tudyk, who was Wash on, um, on, uh, da -da -da, what's it? Firefly. And, uh, it's like a comedy about, you know, going to, going to conventions and being, like, a celebrity, you know, for, uh, a celebrity for some kind of sci-fi thing who goes to a lot of conventions. And it is... <sighs> yeah, that's one where I'm like, it's pretty offensive. <laughs> And there's specifically, there's specifically an arc because it's kind of broken up into arcs around different cons or like different events. Um, where in the arc, it's basically about how he he did a, a cartoon earlier in his career. The character did that. It's kind of implied is supposed to be like South Park. And it was just, uh, yeah, it was just really offensive, right? Like, it's him playing, like, a lot of uh, people of color in, in just, like, really offensive stereotypes. And there's something to be said, because there's a lot of actors, white actors, who played people of color in uh, a lot of cartoons for a lot of cartoon history. And we got to kind of come to terms with that. Um, but a lot of them were way more insensitive than others. And the example that they use in this series just makes him look so bad. That's the thing, I think, with uh, Con Man, is that so much of the series makes the character look like such a jerk. Like, even if we're going, even if we were to say, like, okay, you know, it's, that's just what the industry was like. A lot of people who are not, um, who are not trying to offend, didn't realize they were offending, did roles like that, uh, the the roles in this are just like, come on, man, you must have known better. Like, there's no way that you're gonna say that, oh, he didn't know. It's like, no, 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 no. This isn't Rob Paulson playing um, Haji on the remake of Johnny Test and doing like an Indian accent and like doing like a super stereotypical snake charmer thing. Like, that's you know, the, it's just like a, a, a characters who are nothing but stereotype. 
like very blatant stereotype so it's like what do you want and the the eventual the conclusion is that because some people were able to connect with it and find happiness with uh, that um, that work then it's forgivable like that's what the implication is and I'm like no I mean that's what I'm saying I want to do like basically a whole video essay breaking down why that just doesn't work and why even if you're trying to have this discussion about like you know colorblind casting that's just not that's yeah that's just not an excuse that's just not not a very good um not a very good stance on it cuz like the discussion is ongoing and i think it's kind of ridiculous that it's ongoing but you know um that's that's just where we're at but uh, yeah i i got a lot to say about it i'm just going to i'm just going to hold off cuz i could ramble for a while but i don't think but that's pretty much it. Is like I think Con Man in general as a series is about a really bitter character who's not very endearing at all and tries to excuse some pretty atrocious behavior. So wouldn't recommend it. I'm going to talk more about it when I have time to sit down and write out my thoughts in a more measured and um j just take more time to like piece together exactly how i feel about it i don't like it that's that's the core is that i don't i don't like it and i think that it's uh i think that it's got some bad ideas that are pretty harmful to society in general but also based on when it came out, again, it's like that's that's where we were, you know, um, culturally. Like that's the kind of humor that we were doing. So it doesn't it doesn't excuse it, but it also I understand why that happened, you know. Get back over there. Um, blue, red, I need green. Oh, yep, we're getting real, we're getting real controversial on this stream. Which, I don't know, I find it frustrating that discussions like this are themselves controversial because it's important to discuss this stuff. And, yeah, there's a lot of people who have some pretty broke ideas when it comes to this sort of thing. And I'm not going to pretend like I have... I'm not going to pretend like I have the answers or like my ideas are the only valid ones or anything like that. I know I speak... I speak with a very authoritative tone and I can s be judgmental. I know these things, so I apologize if if that's the vibe that you've gotten. Um I just think yeah, they, I I think that we just need to put more thought into the things that we make and be a little more sensitive to other people. It's you can make humor about sensitive controversial topics without it necessary like even with it being offensive you can make offensive art in ways that are acceptable and aren't purely offense for their own sake you know all right here we go great the gangway is completely inaccessible 
Even if we could reach it, it's covered in vines. They obviously don't care much about lawn maintenance around here. Oh wow, we've almost been going two hours. Cool. I suspect this all has something to do with these strange carvings on the ground. Let's take a closer look. Um, can I... Yep, we can twist. Cool. Well, let's work backwards from where we need to go. Usually is the better way to go about it. Okay, um, that's the first one. So we need to move this along. And, yeah. I don't know, I guess the thing is that, um... is we need to stop treating sensitivity as weakness. Because there are many, many sources of strength that can come from sensitivity, and many, many things, um, and many things that sensitivity brings about that just, just makes things better for everybody involved. So it's just... I, I think... Um, dismissing sensitivity outright as, as political or um, useless is... That's... It's just gonna make bad art, man. Good art has to come from a place of vulnerability and sensitivity. And if you disagree, I mean, I don't, I, I don't really want to see whatever art you're making then. And maybe that's just a taste thing. Maybe that is a quality thing. Who knows? It's really. Objectivity is a farce. There's no way to to guarantee objectivity. Um, where are we going? What are we doing? Maybe this way. Feel out of my depth in this particular puzzle. this? We're missing two. Hmm. Okay, let's let's work this back. So I need to work on that one. Which leads back here. Uh, maybe like this. Not quite. Um, okay. That's a dead end. Don't actually thinking about it. We don't need to grow these vines out. We need to get the water elsewhere. So anything that is allowing the vines to grow is wasting our time. Hmm. 
This isn't going anywhere. There we go. Oh, man. Well, looks like uh, we got another little puzzle here. Solve real quick. Too much. Okay. That didn't really open anything up. There we go. All right, let's do this barrel. Then I'm gonna take a break. we go. Whoops. Gotta go all the way back around. Uh, whoops. That's fine. Ba-bam. Ah, oh, these puzzles are tricky. Gold-plated paroxysm. Rabid Cranky invested his entire retirement savings into the gold-plated barrel market after taking a bath on jade pomegranates. All right. I think we're about there. Is this the boss fight? Ooh. That looks like it might be the boss fight. That's the boss fight. Okay, I'm going to take a break. And then we're going to finish this off. Might do a little bit more after that. I don't know. Depends on how long the boss fight takes. But uh, don't go anywhere. Don't touch that internet dial. I'll be our back with more Donkey Kong DLC in just a minute. Okay? Okay.
All right, I am back. Whoops. Oh, my camera's frozen. Oh boy. Uh, hold on. Hmm. One second. Let me see if uh, can I do this? Oh, come on. It's done this before. Maybe if I. There we go. Okay, I had to switch the inputs for a minute. All right, uh, yeah, I just, my hair is in a, such an awkward length now. It's just like stuck being kind of fluffy, but not really long, kind of flippy, but not quite curly. Ugh, growing it out again. All right, cable stuck on my foot. Okay, we are going to do this boss fight. Let's go. Let's -a go. I guess no Mario's here though. Yeah. Curious if this is just it for this DLC or what? I know that there's like a bunch of challenges and stuff, so we'll probably do some of that on another stream. Getting <laughs> set up. Equipped. Oh Lord. Oh, he's gone crazy. Oh, he's gone hog wild. Didn't do nothing. What's gonna happen now? Okay. Come on now. What? Oh my goodness. That's what this is? Mega Rabbit Kong. Bigger, stronger, dumber. <laughs> Defeat boss. Okay, TNT. Some kind of pool of bad banana juice. Uh, battle HQ it up. Skill tree. Um. Hmm. Yeah, let's get that. Then. I don't think it'll matter that much, but may as well. And grab that. Then let's see if there's any last weapons to grab. Is that... Okay, I thought I had like a cowboy hat from the uh, icon. Then I believe Cranky. Yeah, he's got this. Uh, but it's only ink. Uh, I'll do it. All right, all right. Let's do this. So I'm going to run up here ASAP. I don't know if he's going to be able to, th like, do anything. In terms of range, I guess I could check with the tactic cam or whatever. Oh, okay, don't even waste my time. Critical. Uh. Let's turn on the hairy eye. Then. Boy, not a lot of room to maneuver, huh? He 
keep Cranky on the on the ground. And yeah, we're gonna we're gonna save that. And then sleep. I don't think they'll work on that. Yeah, that doesn't work on the boss. That's fine. Then we just increased our uh, boss or uh, our higher ground damages. So let's use that. Boy, barely chipping away, huh? Yep, that's it. Wow! Oh, hit your own guy, you dingus. Fast forward. Uh, frankly, yeah, let's do this. And we'll heal up Cranky while we can. Can't swoosh him, so let's not waste our time. <gasps> Grab this TNT. See the way he like flipped it in his feet? Love that. Nice. Then yeah, we'll swoose you. Ah, uh, no pipe. And I'll just get you out of the way. Just grab these bananas. I'm not gonna move anywhere. And moving on. Yeah, and that does, like, take some of his energy when he does that. Like, it, it takes some of the fuel. Get it. Going on. All right. Bob, I am. Am I close enough? To yeah, there's some damage. Then. Team jump. Yeah, if I can hit both of them, then it's like it hurts the pool and sucks some from the pool to heal him. So that's the way to go. And then we're gonna get her out of there. Cause it's getting a little dangerous. Ah, 
Gonna bust that up. Shield it up. And I'm getting notifications on my phone. Okay. And then I think that's everything. I think that's Cranky dead. Yep, but that's fine. We can make this work. Okay. Gonna hop up, grab this, zip over here, and crush. Okay, good. Down to two forty eight. Yeah. We got some some uh some options happening. Just wanna be careful not to lose another person, you know? That would be a bit brutal. Crit. Ah! Leaving him with one health? Are you kidding? Man. Okay. I don't think I'm going to be able to do this on the first try. Like, losing a member is such a brutal punishment. Because it, like, limits... It limits your, um... Your options so fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it out. What? Oh. I guess we did need to finish it all right there. Torch song for Rabbit Kong. This is good. So was that it, or are we still going? Cough, cough. Cough, is everyone okay? Oh. Great, the temple collapsed, plunging us headlong into the caverns underneath. Oh, there is a bunch more. You don't think there are mole people living down here, do you? Or centipedes? Centipedes, give me the heebie-jeebies. Alas, even the pale moonlight barely penetrates the gloom down here. I'm losing my sense of sight. Language is all but lost. I'm forgetting what things on the surface look like. Help! Rabbit Peach must be losing her mind. Rabbit Peach, where are... Rabbit Peach, how can you moon bathe at a time like this? You should be panicking blindly, like me. Ahem, you know there's no phone service this far down, right? Oop. Got, got. Enough, we've got to get a grip. Rabbit Kong is still out there controlling the banana market with an iron fist.
We need to carefully find a way out. This is a dungeon after all. There's bound to be traps and spooky dungeon stuff. All right, that's where I'm gonna leave it for tonight. But yeah, we're gonna start up that new schedule uh, on Monday. And it'll be mornings for the most part. I mean, you know, we'll see how mornings do and then maybe a switch to afternoons. We'll find out. But yeah, tune in for that on Monday. Uh, I'll tweet out when I go live and you can always follow to get a notification. Take the time, excuse me, take the time to subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And yeah, check out all my past stuff on the Archive channel on YouTube. Go check out the Discord. Uh, I'm going to be doing a game of Um Actually, the game show. I have the home version, and I'm going to host a game of it over Zoom for a stream coming up. So you can go check out the uh, check out the Discord, which is down below, or I'll toss up a link here. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. It locked me out. Uh, well, that's unfortunate. I'll figure that out in a bit. Um, but let me do it on the iPad. Yeah, go join the Discord, and you guys can sign up to be contestants on that game of Um Actually. So, with all of that said, thanks for tuning in. We're going to raid over to someone, so don't go away quite yet. But thanks very much for watching. So let's see... Uh, who is available to stream over to? I need to switch over to watch mode. Oh, wow. A lot of options. It is Friday night. Um, anybody doing something related? We got a couple Mario Karts. Let's go with Wolf Thunder. I haven't, uh, yeah, I haven't. Read it over to Wolf Thunder in quite a while. Slash raid. Wolf. Thunder. 117. I hope I spelt that right. Did it, did it work? Uh, yes. Okay, it's working. Cool. There we go. Okay, let him know I sent you. He's playing some Mario Kart. And uh, have a great rest of your weekend. See you all on Monday, okay? Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye.